hey, if you have an interest in overlanding, we'll call it a hobby or a lifestyle, then you're probably familiar with rooftop tents like this one right behind me. We've had a bunch of questions through social media, through Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube about our rooftop tent. What it's like, how is it like to sleep in, what does it look like on the inside? So we wanted to cover all of that in this review of this rooftop tent. Hey, I'm Jeff, welcome to SAR Trail, and we're gonna get into this thing really quickly, but I wanted to tell you, we have seen so many different kinds of rooftop tents over the years, through people that we know, through Overland Expo West, Overland Expo East, through Overland Rallies. So we've been studying these things for a long time. So I'm gonna kinda of do a general overview of rooftop tents, at the same time doing a review of this Tough Stuff Ranger 3 tent. So, let's jump right on in. Let me tell you some things about it. Okay, so this tent is made by Tough Stuff Overland. And the model we have is, you can see right there, the Ranger 3. Three means it sleeps three persons. Now I'll say that's a bit of a stretch. Three people, as long as one of them is a child or a very small person, probably be okay. Okay, so this is the annex. This is just an outside overview, and then we're going to jump on the inside and really show you the nuts and bolts of this thing. So there's your annex. Up top, you can see you have the rain fly, which covers the top. Very important to use if you're expecting any kind of rain, snow, or hail, anything like that. Very good to have on. Windows of this model are very standard to all rooftop tents of this style, and they all have these poles that do the mounting. And they're kind of a bending pole. They keep tension on this, so you're fine in heavy wind, no problem at all. And let's go around to the other side. You can see right in there to the window. This side is a much larger window. Same idea. And all of those have screens on them, no CM screens. And they also have a way to close them up from the inside or the outside on, on this particular window. So you can close them up, seal them up if you're expecting a lot of cold weather or possibly a lot of wind that you want to stay out of. And then coming back all the way around to this side you see the third window. And that window right there, same as the first one we looked at. Same width, same shape, same everything. Okay, so this is the annex. An annex is the portion of a rooftop tent that you can sleep in, you can store gear in, you can stand up and change in, and it has your ladder that gets you up to the roof, rooftop section. So this has windows as well. We haven't opened those because we are up in the mountains here and it's been pretty chilly, but let me show you what it looks like. So this will roll up, you know, not like that. Let me, kind of rolls up like a tent would. So just roll it up real neat. But I won't do that for the sake of this video. Just show you here. So you got your screen, and then you have your interior section as well. So if you really want good airflow, you got to open them both. Okay, so then the outside is rolled up. And then if you want to get maximum airflow, you can then take open this one, and you can roll this one up too as well. But this gives you your maximum airflow. Once again, no CM screen here, so you don't have to worry about, you know, no CMs, red bugs, mosquitoes, things like that and it opens up a lot of airflow. And there's one on both sides, plus you have the door here, the, the door at the front you'll see in just a second, has a screen as, on it as well, and kind of a rain fly door as well. Okay, so that's everything open up. You got this window, that window open. These screens are permanent. There's different types of tents. Some of them might have some where these are not permanent, permanent. I don't really know. But on this, the Tough Stuff one, these stay in place all the time, which is perfect for us. We never need to open these up. And then come around the other side if you could. So then here's the doorway. It's plenty big. I'm six foot one. I have plenty of space to climb in here. It's not like a ground tent where you're climbing down on your knees to get inside of. There's plenty of space on this one. So before we go inside and take a look, I wanted to show you how this thing secures to the ground. It's really, really basic if you understand a couple tricks. And I'm gonna show you those tricks. Okay, so this is the back side of our H3. And your rooftop tents, when they're up on the roof and they're closed, they're like a sandwich like this. And they got a hinge on one side. The other three sides have no hinge, they open up. So on our side, we have the tent open up to passenger side of the vehicle. 
You can have them open up to the driver's side, you can have them open up to the rear, just depends on your configuration. So, it opens up like this, you got your sandwich closed up on the roof, and then it opens up like this, passenger side for us. So, the way that it opens is really kind of crucial that you understand your setup with your annex. So, the more leveled the ground is that you're camping on, the better it is for you. Right now, we're up on some rocks to get our H3 level, so that means we're up a lot higher on our annex and our rooftop tent side. So we had to make a couple adjustments. So that you got that concept, take a look here down at the bottom. Here's your annex. Really key that you take your annex back as far as you can under your vehicle. You can see this is a big 12 inch wide tire. We're way beyond that where we're, where we're locked in. We're probably 14, 15 inches uh, from the side of the Hummer underneath it. Because you wanna pull the annex close to your vehicle and then, if not, your windows won't be straight. Your windows will look like a funny house if you don't pull them. So you gotta get it really straight. So then you can see the rest of these stakes down here. Once you get the, the back ones under, as far back as you can, then you can see your line is straight on that seam. And then that strap goes in straight. And then this anchoring goes in straight here as well. So ignore this pole and this orange. This is part of our awning, not part of the rooftop tent or the annex. It's just how the awning gets secure. So then back down here, you can see the next strap. We just pull it straight on out, right even with the stream. I'm sorry, right even with the seam. And then same thing down here at the corner, even with the seam. And then as you come around toward your door, the door, same idea. You got a seam here and just take your anchoring right outside of your seam. It's really key that you grasp that part of it or you're gonna be fighting getting your floor level. Let me kind of show you now where we stand in here with the floor. Um, once again, we're on a slope. It's a pretty steep slope. So we didn't get the floor perfect. If we were on flat ground, it would be really perfect. But we did pretty good considering the Hummer's up about four or five inches higher than the tires are because of the rocks that it's on. So it makes it a little difficult to level, but come check this out. Okay, so this is inside. You can see we got a couple wrinkles here in the floor, but not bad. If you do this thing wrong, and you don't tuck those first couple stakes in back under your vehicle, you're gonna have folds and creases all over this thing. It's gonna be a mess. So that's a little bit of a hint. That's not specific to the tough stuff. That is to all annexes for rooftop tents. Okay, so here's your ladder. And so you guys know what I'm gonna do, show you everything about this tent and this whole setup and system. And then at the end, I'm gonna tell you the pros and cons of the Tough Stuff Ranger 3. We've had this long enough and we spent a lot of nights in this thing. We had our first night on this trip, we had snow come down. We've been in this thing in hail, we've been in it in heavy rain, heavy wind, at the beach, in the mountains, all over the place. So we've used this thing everywhere. So we can tell you the good and bad about it. So here's the ladder. It just folds underneath here. Uh, when you, once again, that whole sandwich thing, your ladder, then you just pull your ladder and it folds it right down. We're not gonna do a setup and tear down of this. We've shown that on our other videos. If you wanna look, just go look at some of our other overlanding videos and we show the setup and tear down on it. There's a ton of those things on YouTube, but we wanted to give you a real life use review on it. So right over here, you have a boot bag. This boot bag, you can store anything you want in it. When we have the annex, we keep our shoes down here on the annex. When we use this tent without the annex, we'll throw our boots in here. That way you climb up on the ladder, throw your boots or your sandals, whatever, in here, and you're not tracking dirt up into your tent. For now, we use this for things like flashlights or t-shirts, whatever, things like that. But nice little handy, handy piece of storage. So you can see the space in here. Let me show you once again, I'm six foot one. Plenty of room here to sleep. You can sleep here. We've had two people sleep in this tent and had plenty of room still for bags, all of our gear, things like that. This is where our daughter typically sleeps and she gets her own space where she can play, where she can do schoolwork. Um, so you can see there's a lot of room. I forget the size that it opens up, but honestly, it's probably about eight foot by eight foot that this whole area opens. If you have smaller tires, you can see here the impression of these big mud terrain tires that we have. These are huge, so they stick out into our tent, but we put huge tires on here. And if you have a vehicle that is designed a little different than our H3, the H3 is 
you know, kind of more narrow at the, the top and in the body, and then the fenders stick out really wide for the tires. Some other vehicles that are designed differently that have more straight lines on the side, you'll gain even more space toward your vehicle. But that's completely up to you guys, how your configuration is. Another thing that we have here, not all rooftop tents have this, not all annexes have this feature. But you can see here, if you keep gear in the back of your vehicle, look at all this mud here. We kind of got muddy getting out to this campsite. But you can open this whole thing up and you can access the back door of your 4x4. So if you have gear in there, you can easily access it from your annex so you don't have to take the annex off to get into your back door. None of that gives you simple, simple access to that right away. Now, I'll be honest, we have never used that. We know some people that do. It's a good feature, but we don't really store that much gear right there. If we do, we already pull it outside. We put it in the cargo area of the rear of our H3, but it's a good thing if you need it. So what do you guys, you guys want to go upstairs now? Check out the upstairs? Because that's the biggest question we get is what is the upstairs like? How much room do you get? For people that haven't been inside rooftop tents, they say, well, how much room do you have? What's it like? Is it comfortable? So we're going to address all of that right up there. Okay, so Natalie, my wife, is in the, the access point. She's standing on the stairs right now. You're looking toward uh, what was that? the driver's side of our vehicle. So over here is the rear of our vehicle. Over here is front of our vehicle. So right up in here, just above where you're looking through that port, is a net. Once again, a yeah, you can see right here, it's all rolled up. You got the no netting, and then you have the window that closes completely. So you have this window over here. You can close that outside. That's your kind of rain fly over your window. If it's really cold, you can close that down. If it's really windy, if you're at the beach and sand is blowing everywhere, we experience that at Padre Island. So you can pull those down and close them. Or you can go ahead and close this guy right here. If it's cold or you just want some more privacy, you know, really simple. Just run your zippers up and you're closed. Super easy to take it back down. And then this we pretty much just tuck it on down. This screen also can be unzipped. One big plus is these upper windows all have a screen that you can unzip. That means all those poles, you can take those poles down, close the outer side of that window, that rain, your outer shell. You can close it from up here. You don't have to get out. If it starts pouring rain or it's getting really windy or cold, you can close these things up completely from inside. Really, really good feature. Um, also, you got some pockets in here, two of them on either side. So store a bunch of stuff in here. That's really helpful for things like glasses, flashlights, um, anything else that you want in here, snacks when you're sleeping, whatever it might be, really good thing to have. It just keeps your stuff from falling down into the sides and you forget about it. One thing I want to tell you here, let me see if I can reach these. These things here, keys to your vehicle, take it from me. Never put those in those pockets. Because you know what happens? You might forget, like somebody I know that's wearing red flannel right now, and then you close up your entire tent, that whole sandwich, you close it back up, you zip it all up, and you go to drive away and you're like, my keys are in here. So then you unpack everything, unfold your sandwich again, and then you get it back up in here. So don't put your keys in there. Just take it from me, keep them in your pocket, find them someplace safe to keep them. That's not the spot. So another great thing <laughs> about this tent, very common to tents of this style, are vents up here. So there's these triangular shaped vents and they're always open and they just allow for airflow. They don't keep your tent cold. Um, if you're trying to seal it up and stay warm, they're not gonna allow wind to get in. It's just a vent so you get fresh air coming in because when you zip this thing up completely, it gets pretty tight. And the whole idea with those vents is one, so you don't get so much condensation in here. If it's really cold outside and on a humid day and you've got a couple people in here and you're warm, you can get a lot of condensation to develop in your tent. This lessens that condensation and it also allows good air to come in for you to breathe. Very important things. Okay, so they call this a three person tent. And I will say that it's possible because we have slept, my wife, myself, and our daughter up in here on a bunch of nights. Now our daughter, she's getting a little bit taller now. So there's less room here. But the way we've done it is, Natalie will sleep on this side, I'll sleep on this side. And down at the foot of the bed across, since this is a very long bed, 
she can sleep down on the bottom kind of across us perpendicular to us and that works okay but she's getting bigger now and I would say that we have pretty much reached the limits of the three-person ability of this tent we probably will at another point try that with her sleeping with her head down toward you all and her feet facing this way so none of us are you know shoulder 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 three people across so the dimensions of this tent i don't remember them offhand but they're going to be on the screen right about now and they'll show you the dimensions of the mattress so you can kind of see the footprint that it has and how much room you have it's not as wide as a queen but it's much much longer than a queen mattress would be so there's different ways to configure how you want to sleep but once again i'm six foot one there's plenty of space for here my wife is five foot eight there's plenty of space for us and back when our daughter was five six seven years old plenty of room for her she's eight years old now and we're kind of running out of space another thing that we've done there's uh companies that sell sheets specific for rooftop tents now tough stuff does not sell anything like that they don't get into the aftermarket products for their own tents but a company like 230 has aftermarket products that fit this size tent so does tapui so for that we have tapui sheets on here if you can see those these tapui sheets they're designed to fit this mattress to fit this footprint and they're really really nice we're going to put a link for those in the description you can buy them right off of amazon you can get them really fast from there just make sure you buy the right size for your mattress in addition let me show you something here on the side we have a comforter here that we have on it's a pretty heavy comforter because it's been really cold um, another thing we put on is an inch and a half foam topper this mattress down at the bottom is a two and a half inch mattress and i'm going to tell you that inch and a, that two and a half inch mattress is not sufficient maybe if you sleep flat on your back for five or six hours you can get by with it but if you like to sleep on your side or if you're going to sleep for longer than five or six hours man you need some more cushion we started off with this memory foam a three inch and it was so nice but the problem is once again you got that sandwich and when you go to close the sandwich this hinge right here it was boom. We we're destroying we're going to destroy the hinge by trying to fold up a three inch memory foam inside of it when you close it all up to drive down the road it was very comfortable but it just didn't fit because now you're folding it up double three inches plus three inches six inches of memory foam plus your mattress not possible but this in inch and a half we'll link it in in the description below really really good memory foam fits in here perfectly a little bit tight when you fold it up but certainly not a concern okay another thing i wanted to touch on up in here which is super important if you go anywhere that's cold weather we have used this at 10 degrees now granted we had a very warm winter sleeping bag up in here with us but we stayed very very warm in 10 degrees in the middle of winter here in colorado we closed up the windows all of that was closed up sealed up so no wind got in here we closed up the back window where you guys are at right now so everything was sealed up except for the little vents we have up at the top we had our winter sleeping bag up in here and we stayed really really comfortably warm at 10 degrees so that's a huge huge plus because some of these rooftop tents i would never use at 10 degrees this one it worked out really well for us we probably would have been fine another 10 or possibly even another 20 degrees colder with our setup inside i don't think you're going to come in here in 10 degrees and just put a sheet on and be okay you'll probably die you need to have the right type of bedding in here too but that's just letting you know that this is a four season tent it can really do that we've been in like i said before we've been in snow we've been in hail all types of inclement weather and this thing has held up really really well for us okay another thing that we've done we have some lanterns that we've hung up here from the top there are companies like tapui makes lights that are designed to ride right up these rails and then you leave them on we haven't purchased those i'm not sure if, if we're going to do that but they make some battery operated ones that they stay in here just some led strips that come in here and you turn them on and then you have lights in here and you just fold it right back up in your tent and that's a really nice feature something we might look at doing here in the future but right now we have lanterns we just hang them up here on the straps that hold the whole thing steady so no problem you can get lights so when you go looking at your rooftop tent there's other companies don't just look at the manufacturer there's other companies out there that make accessories for your rooftop tent 
Okay, so now I wanna tell you guys some of the pros and cons of the Tough Stuff Ranger 3 tent like this one. At the same time, kinda of give you some overall pluses or features that you find in other rooftop tents that might be really important to you. First off, one thing that this really lacks in almost every single rooftop tent of this variety, of this kind of same build, lacks. But there are companies that make, you see these, these arms right here. There's one, two, three on this side, one, two, three on this side. They go up over the top, they continuously wrap around. This is the, the backbone, if you will, of the tent part of it. It's what holds it all together. So these things here, when you fold it all, to, again, remember that's how to have it, the sandwich. So you got your sandwich that folds. So these things just close down like an accordion and they fold down. The problem with this tent and most others is all of this tent material that you have in between these poles, it just pushes out. So then when you have to climb up on the roof of your vehicle and tuck it all in between these poles, so tuck in this section, tuck in this section, tuck in this one and tuck in this one and do that for both sides. It's a bit of a pain and there is a solution for it. Now, I don't think you can do it aftermarket, but there are companies, I know 23.0 makes bungees that go across here. And they go right across here. You take them out when you're gonna be in it, but when you go to close it, you clip on your bungees, clip on your bungees in one, two, three, four places on both sides. And then when you go to close it, those bungees just pull all that canvas toward the middle. So you're not having to climb up there and tuck it all in and like we'll do it where Natalie will be holding the ladder, slowly closing it, and I'm up on the roof saying, okay, a little bit more, I'm tucking in. Let me go to the other side, let me tuck it in. All right, come back and lower it a little bit more. Certainly doable, but there is a nice solution with other varieties that have those bungees, boom, and they pull it right in. Super great feature. Okay, another, I'm gonna say this one's a pro and a con. This is a very well lit tent, so during the day you can be up here, we're filming right now with no, no lights, and I think you can see pretty well. But when the sun comes up and it hits your tent, it lights the whole thing, it starts to glow. There are companies that make a blackout version of their rooftop tents. Once again, 23.0 makes this. And I keep referring back to 23.0 because we've spent a lot of time in their tents and looking at their different variety of tents and features. And I really like their products. So if taking a nap in the middle of the day and you need complete darkness is really important to you, this is probably not the right tent for you. But if you want a tent that you can be up in in the middle of the day and see really well, this kind of glowing canvas you see up here it gets you a lot of light. You could be up here and you could read. So plus or minus depending on what your need is. Okay, wanted to point out two straight up cons with this and then follow up with one huge pro to this Tough Stuff Ranger 3. Con number one, really this is a big one for us, is the ladder. The ladder has one position that it locks in, just one. Now the ladder is crucial in leveling your bed because it's what supports your bed when it folds out. Once again, that, that whole sandwich thing, when it folds out, that ladder supports this whole section of bed up here. If you're not on level ground, and if by chance where the ladder's feet are going is lower than where the tires are for your vehicle, you gotta start moving your ladder forward, meaning toward your vehicle. And it gets more and more steep as you go. Where we have it now is pretty steep. Any steeper than this, we probably would have to rig something up to make it work. So that's a big con for me because other companies make a telescoping ladder. It just, and you can put it at an infinite number of inches, you know, whether your ground here is higher or lower, you can always get that ladder at the exact angle that you want. Because that's a really good angle right there. You can see we're at like about like that. It's almost just vertical angle. So that's a pretty difficult angle to go. So another problem with this, you have these pins and the metal here and there's been more than once that I have nicked myself in dealing with these things. They kind of get stuck, so you're always kind of fighting with them to get them in and out. The telescoping ladders are a much, much better version. I will say, I think you can get some of the telescoping ladders that other companies make, and I think they will bolt right up in here, and we might be looking at that and just change this whole thing out, get a telescoping one. I think the dimensions are basically the same, so that might be something we'll do in the future. Definite con. Another con we have, and this one we think is a pretty big deal. It's not a deal breaker, but it's a pretty big deal. And it's very, very common to many rooftop tents. Come take a look inside here. So here's a big con. This is the part that folds over that the ladder is supporting. If you can see here, hopefully there's enough light that you can see, there's dimples all over the place in this. This is the bottom of your tent. 
you know, your mattress is right above here. This is the roof of where I'm at. And every time I go up on the roof to tighten down the ladder, this thing covers up with the bag before you hit the road. So you Velcro it all down, you zip on the bag. So I'm always up there working, standing on this thing, putting knees on this thing, sitting on this thing. And every time I do, I'm putting dimples in this. Now, I don't think it's changed the structural integrity of it. I don't think it's changed the usability of it at all. But there's dimples all over this thing. And a number of companies now have started putting diamond plate, that just diamond plate aluminum sheet right over this. I think it's probably put on with two-sided tape. Maybe they bolted into it. I'm not sure exactly how they do it, but a really, really simple, cheap solution so you don't have a dimpled up floor to your rooftop tent. And I think that is a legitimate con to this style of tent. And it's not just to the tough stuff. It is, honestly, most companies have this same exact problem. All right, so I wanted to tell you one huge plus to this rooftop tent and annex setup. But before I do, if you haven't yet, subscribe to SAR Trail and follow us and hit that little bell in the bottom right hand corner, man, and get notified every time we post overlanding content for you guys. We are always doing gear reviews, vehicle reviews, and just showing you like our journey of getting better and better at the overlanding lifestyle. So final huge plus to the Tough Stuff Ranger 3. And I gotta say, it's the reason we bought it. One, we weren't expecting the quality of it to be this good because we bought this thing and it is a entry level kind of there's there's cheaper rooftop tents i will say which we steered away from because they just had a cheap feel and look to them we bought this one because it's what fit our budget at the time we got this the rooftop tent plus the annex for 1300 bucks i gotta say in the world of rooftop tents that is a very very good price there are other rooftop tent companies that you're going to pay 2600 dollars just for the tent and then you're going to pay another $500, $600, $800,000 for the annex. So $1,300 for both is really, really a great, great price. And I wanted to talk about the bang for the buck because that's really what the big plus is about the Tough Stuff Ranger 3. It's bang for the buck. I'm going to tell you the fabric that's used on it is very, very similar to what Tapui uses. Tapui uses what feels like the same density type of fabric and their tents are way more expensive. Now, granted, they have the name recognition. They sell tons of accessories. They're a great company to go to for accessories or if you want to get one of their tents, they're a great company. I'm not knocking them at all. But this is very, very similar in build quality for a fraction of the price. Now, I would say that companies like 230 have changed the fabric. They've upgraded the fabric. They've got a lot of different things. So they've made huge improvements over this model of rooftop tent but for us this is a major major bang for the buck so that's our review on the tough stuff ranger 3 and kind of giving you some hints on rooftop tents in general hopefully that has helped you because when you go to make your decision get the one that's right for you that's right for your family stay within the budget you have to stay within there are good affordable rooftop tents like this one you don't have to spend three four thousand dollars on a rooftop tent to get a really good one you can get one for 1300 bucks and it's a very very good tent adjust a couple of the things that we've done get a mattress topper for it you're going to want it i'm just telling you straight up so another thing you might want to do if you get the tough stuff ranger or one that has this same size tough stuff makes this really cool feature they don't do a lot of accessories but they make this reflective rain fly you put this up on the roof of your tent it is kind of like an illuminized reflective rain fly that if it's going to be really hot where you're at you put this guy, take off that rain fly up there, put this one on there, and it reflects a lot of that heat from the middle of the day. And it keeps your tent a lot cooler. Really cool feature to have. Really easy to put on and off. Okay, so if you want to see more about this tent, check out some more of our overlanding videos on our channel. And you'll see where we've used this tent in all kinds of conditions. And that'll get you more of what it looks like to set up, to tear down, to actually live in it. And then also, we have, uh, from Overland Expo East, we have a video on rooftop tents specific. We'll put a link for that in the description. We'll put a link for some of those other videos in the description. And you can just click right on those and then go and see all the different varieties of rooftop tents that are at the expos or what it's like to live in this guy for what have we done about three weeks at a time, I believe. And that's all we have for you guys. If you have not yet, please subscribe to Sartre. We will see you guys next time.